My decision to go into optometry started at a very early age for me. I remember when I was in high school in West Virginia, seeing the blackboard was becoming a challenge. And over time, my high school teacher suggested, you better get your eyes checked. I was extremely reluctant to do that because it was not a cool thing back then to be in glasses. We did go to the optometrist and from that day on, I just fell in love with optometry. I remember telling her directly, this is exactly what I want to do when I grow up. When I put my glasses on and I compared what I was seeing now with what I was seeing before, I realized the world was a whole different place for me. And that sort of excitement that I experienced, it's something that I wanted to give to other people as well. After graduating from optometry school in Ghana, I was working at a UN level for hospital in the big city, so in Accra, Ghana. I remember several times where people would come with important concerns. They had pain in their eyes, they had keratitis, and these patients were literally pushed aside because at the end of the day, you were not losing a limb. So what was the trouble there? Um, all of this started firing my curiosity into the research of neuroscience, into pain, which is what I really study now. I was interested in whether there was a way we could actually find objective metrics of, of measuring pain. I feel very privileged to have encountered Dr. Simpson in my research and to work out of the research center here at the University of Waterloo School of Optometry. We deliver different stimulation to the surface of the eye. The correlates that we look at are pupil size, blood flow on the surface of the eyes, and number three, focusing. These three correlates, when combined, can actually give us an idea of how much pain an individual experiences. I believe that children, infants, babies would benefit extremely from this research and that it would give them a voice to tell us exactly what they're feeling. Also, non-communicative patients such as adults with cognitive challenges stand immensely to benefit from this because once again it will be telling us what they are experiencing something that they can otherwise not do in an effective way thirdly clinicians and scientists would benefit from this because you would know what treatment regimen to apply because you know what the patient is experiencing this research is in its very early stages, but I have no doubt that in the coming years, it will be as simple as sitting in front of a camera, getting your picture taken, and information coming out telling you how much pain you are experiencing. So it would be very exciting to be associated with the foundations, sort of the blocks that started off this movement.